in the yeah. very same season of September, like all the other years. But sure. the problem is the corona. So we've cancelled all international trips probably next year. Yeah. Probably yeah. next year. Okay, you you mentioned that you are a, you are a political science student. Um, you have studied. I threw vets. myself in the bus, ne? Yeah, <laughs> let's get into that one. And uh, uh, you have um, you, you have studied, you know, uh, foreign policy and international affairs at vets, right? You know, big weights, you know. <laughs> So I've, I've, you know, and I, I remember we once had this conversation at some point, uh, maybe uh, you, you'll remember, um, around foreign policy, you know. Um, first, uh, foremost, what was your sort of research, you know, or studies, what were you focusing on? Oh, my honours was not in foreign policy. So my honours was looking at trade oh, in the okay. SADC region. Oh. Um, the, mo the mobility around it, you know, the efficiency around how we trade with one another as, as SADC region. Is it working? Is it efficient? Are you able to move from, you know, the DRC to South Africa without problems? Are you mm. able to get employed there? Can you come study here? What are the discrepancies? And they're just a lot. It's, it's yeah. not easy in SADC. Mm. Why is it not easy? Because, and, and I'm talking about Europe earlier, uh, and uh, I was looking at the model of Europe, and I was looking at the model of the United States of America, because the states there in USA, they are more like countries, you know, they have their own policies yeah. and laws and everything like that. And I was also looking at, you also mentioned something about Sweden. If you look at the Swedish sort of um, uh, 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 model as a country, um, they also have, because I think, is it Swedish or the Scotlands? They have the Italian section of the country, they have the French section of the country and everything like that. But in all of this, they have allowed themselves to have some sort of uh, trades in between them as, 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 as people and as countries. If you look at the whole Eurozone adopting one currency and everything like that, the United States of America, why is it so hard? And I know that a couple of, I think it was last year, there was some document that was signed by African countries on some free trade. I don't know how far that is. Why is it so hard for us as Africans to, to have, to establish this free trade amongst us? You know, what is that? So, you know, that case study was too deep, Shem. So um, I think one biggest problem that is delaying us or that is causing problems for us is production. Um, we're not having a lot of internal or domestic production to be sure. trading with one another. The production that we have, most of it goes out into the other countries. It can be your Middle East, it can be your Europe or your, your Americas. Sure. And you'll be so amazed that uh, some countries tend to go fetch certain goods outside, leaving their own African country while yeah. they're in the SADC together. Yeah. But the biggest problem that's making SADC to not triumph is because of this lot of unions that are happening. There's SACU, there's COMESA, there's ECOWAS. So most countries are in all these unions at once. So you can't be in three unions uh, at once because okay. you're compromising the other ones, you know? Sure, you're compromising sure. the other countries because you find COMESA is saying, um, for us to, to get fish, we will make sure that we go to the Indian ocean of side of things and then SADC says no well maybe we should get it from America or maybe we should get it from Europe so it compromises that state which is within a lot of unions the, the biggest challenge I met there was um, double of unions triple of unions and the terms of reference of those unions not being binding and not you know I feel like those people are just there because they just want to be there they have everything in paper but they cannot enforce it Wow. And they don't enforce it as well. So maybe as a nation of Africa, we must decide to say, we're going to work with SADC alone, or we're going to work with Comesa alone, or I'm mm. going to be in SAC alone, or we're, we're just going to work as an African union, rather than being in different unions, which are differently influenced. You find SADC is influenced by the Chinese, and you find yeah. that it was influenced yeah. by the United States. And political ideologies don't allow. They just don't add up when you're yeah. in those two. So that's one of the biggest problems. We'll never have free trade because we're being affected by third parties from the outside world. And even as countries, we, we just don't want to uplift each other. 
happening wow. in South Africa is doing so well in maybe coal. Why do you want to go get coal somewhere else and not get it in South Africa because yeah, it's, yeah. it's now in your continent? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, DRC is one of the countries that has so much resources and minerals that can cover sure. the entire continent. Sure. But <laughs> what are we getting from the DRC as South Africa? Nothing. One or two things. Some of the things we go out and get them from America or we get them from the Chinese, but the DRC has everything that Africa needs. But we're not working with the DRC. We continuously let the DRC have civil wars. There's no peace. Mm. There's always mm. unrest. <laughs> Why? Yeah. No, hey, man, this is a sad conversation. And um, I'm, I'm, it's one conversation that I'm very passionate about. And it, you know, it, I know that it, it, it requires its sitting alone, you know, because there's just yes. a lot of things that I think, you know, as Africans, we're not doing right, our politics. That's why sometimes, you know, especially with people like you, we need a fresh blood in politics because I think that is also another failure that we have there, you know, and, you know, because otherwise we will we'll keep on recycling these problems, you know, because most of them, they require some sort of political will, you know, and they require some sort of, um, you know, just that, you know, notion of like, this is what we need to do, uh, some visionary of some sort, but uh, our political system and landscape has also been lacking at some point. So it is, is, is a very complex thing, but I like the way you have summarized it so well from an academic perspective. And that analysis was super succinct. Um, let, let's touch base on this. Um, the foreign policy, because you also did, you know, study a lot on foreign policy. And what is Not our foreign policy? How bad? <laughs> ah, come on. Are you being humble now? <laughs> you know, VETS, VETS tends to, to throw people under the bus. You yeah. do a course for like a semester and they're like, yeah, you yeah. did a lot of you foreign did a lot policy. Of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but even if you didn't do a lot, but I think you have yeah. some perspective. Uh, also as a political student, as a political science student, yeah. right? Yeah. So... Do we even have a foreign policy in South mm -hmm. Africa? Because I, I don't know I don't it. Know I, I have been trying. Okay, let me tell you how we've been taught your foreign policy. And maybe yeah. it will relate with you. So foreign policy, we tend to look at the way pre the president of that year or how presidents have been behaving. Sure. Okay. So with us, we start with a Nelson Mandela where you say, your foreign policy is full of peace. Your yeah. foreign policy is advocating for human rights. Sure. Your foreign policy wants to see everyone coming together, a rainbow nation and a diverse nation. Sure. That's the type of foreign policy you get from your Mandela. Then you get into your Mbeki, someone yeah. who's pro-economics, you know, a person sure. who's pushing for pan-Africanism. But you say, where is the pan-Africanism? What has this man implemented in terms of ensuring that we have strong ties with the African nations. We don't have mm -hmm. such, it's just a few things, but we are strongly tied with either the West or, or, or the North, you understand? Sure. Then, you, then you have your Zuma who comes in. For me, the man was advocating for more than anything social policy. Because sure. under his administration, you see free education. Sure. Under his administration, you see uh, barking contracept contraceptives becoming more. You see yeah. HIV and AIDS, uh, ARVs. ARVs becoming a reality, you know. Sure. Under his administration, you see Aaron Motswaledi coming with NHI. So yeah. for me, then that's where the, the, the social policy was coming from. I, I don't know. For me, it was like, okay, at least we're uplifting poor people. Then you have your sitting current president who's saying, okay, I'm taking a country from Chinese. It was having a lot of Sino relations. I'm now moving this side of a sure. Trump. I cannot do this. And it's because of his character. So foreign policy gets affected by the personality of the president. The oh, president's yeah. personality, the interest of the president, mm -hmm. and what the president is doing externally outside of where he's serving tends to affect what is happening. You look at Zuma, the reason why he was too much in, uh, at the side of Chinese and Indian, there's that Gupta relation. You know, sure, sure, you look sure. at your Mandela, he was the man when he came out, he just wanted to, to bring peace, peace, and that's why you see him advocating for peace, you see him advocating for human rights after being oppressed for so long. Then you meet a Ramaphosa, 
the man always wants to make sure that the economy is in a particular way that is stabilized it's working well everyone is getting this and that but however he's not finding that refuge from the chinese he's seeing the other refuge from the northern countries so our foreign policy has been strongly affected by how the president behaves it doesn't have a flow so this one does this and this one does that there's no continuation plan to say okay the president uh, mandela was talking about human rights how can we expand on human rights yeah they just start off some, something new you get to a zuma boom there's free education and you were like we were not expecting that <laughs> the economy didn't allow us to have that but we have it and then Cyril ramaphosa is just like okay it's fine i'll continue with this but i am not going to find politics from the Chinese side. I find politics from this side. So we're shifting in that way. Yo, you can be a political analyst, you know that. Hi, babe. Hi, <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> no, because that, 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 that analysis, that political analysis was just spot on, you know? It was just so spot on. Like, <laughs> it, it, it makes sense to me now because the, the, especially the United States, because I think their foreign policy is one that is very visible. And now it makes sense when you say that it's attached to the character of the president. Because if you look at the, 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 the US foreign policy, you know, you know the Ob Obama's policy, you look at um, Trump's policy, you know, you somehow see that actually it does tie a little bit or in part with what the president is sort of advocating for in person, you know? Yes. So that was, yo, really, that was so great, man. <laughs> <laughs> you must thank Habib. You must thank Habib's curriculum. That's where yeah. we got everything. Yeah, okay. So, but then, you know, you know, and, I, and, I, and I, I like the conversation on foreign policy. That's why I'm bringing it here. Uh, but then, do we have a home policy, like an internal policy, not a foreign policy? Because I feel like before we talk about a foreign policy, let's start first start with a home policy. And I was, over the years, I was looking at, you know, you had some sort of programs or some documents that I can say maybe they were policies, documents such as the Reconstruction Development Program, the RDP. Um, you had uh, documents such as the growth, um, uh, employment, and and the redistribution, the GAE, accelerated the care, something. Accelerated yeah. something. Uh, now you have the National Development Plan, and somewhere along the lines, there was uh, some Vision 2020. You, you get what I'm saying? And we're in 2020 now. <laughs> 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 you know? So, so, so what amazes me with all these sort of documents or policies is that they, they get passed. For example, the RDP, uh, which a lot of people would just associate it to housing, it was not only a housing <laughs> document, <laughs> but it spoke a lot about electricity. I mean, that's what they see out of it. So what yeah, that's what they see. That's what they see. Yeah, I agree we even call them RDP houses, you know? But the document, you know, elaborated on, on water, it elaborated on electricity, it elaborated on land reform, the one that we are now sort of discussing and everything like that. Uh, and one of, one of their goals, especially when coming to housing, was that by the year 2003, everyone who is in need of shelter should get shelter. And now we're post-2003, more than 10 years into now into 2020, and you still have situations of people not having housing. So we seem to be having this document, well-written, well-written policies and everything like that. But then are we even holding our leaders accountable to say, but leader, what happened here? The document, did you actually achieve? You know, it's more like we just have them as some chartered sort of um, amusement or to create some political uh, lexicon and yeah. jargon in the process. What was your take on that? It's, yeah, now you, you're picking up my brain. <laughs> yeah, it's unscripted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, it's, it's tough. I think we, we must also admit firstly that in politics, people are going to say things that they might not deliver because they want to appeal to you guys. And our failure as the citizenship is to not hold them accountable 
on the pools in terms of voting, you know? You give people three, four chances when they failed on something. You know, the other day I was talking to my sister about uh, Comrade Tokyo Sokwale, one slept in a shack in deep sloot and said, yeah, we're going to make sure that this woman gets a house. <laughs> and I don't know if the woman even got the house. Sure, so sure. Uh, we must understand that these policies are crafted in such a sense that when they come to us as the citizens, we get amazed and we, we find appealing in them to say, okay, it's going to address our challenges without looking at, okay, what is the progression level for you guys to do this? Have you done this before? Are you able to do this? How can we have holding you of accountability in terms of from a local government to provincial and national? So we fail to hold accountability mm. there. And I think also as South Africans, we just want to always demand more than we tend to look at is that thing happening we accept things and then we let it go and sit and say well, why is it not happening it should be happening by now and unfortunately as a citizenship that is not holding government accountable that's why you have corruption on the rise you know yeah, um this, yeah. this this policies can be easily implemented the problem is corruption the problem is that people get into their seat get comfortable and no one is holding them accountable. But it's only then now where you have the EFF putting the NC, you know, at on their toes to say, what have you done here? But for yeah. me, even the EFF being in office for all those past years, I still don't see the NC being on their toes. But it's only now during Corona where I'm like, so the NC can deliver. For the first yeah, time in my yeah, life, yeah, yeah, the yeah. NC bringing Yo. water, them bringing uh, electricity, giving us unemployment grants because now they are worried that, oh, people are dying. So yeah. we need to make sure that people survive. So it's not that they cannot deliver. They must be accountable, uh, be held accountable by something. And we as the citizens, we fail to do that. It's only now an infection that is holding our state so accountable to deliver in all forms. Currently, I've never seen the NC at work like right now. So, no, it is at work, eh? But we must also appreciate the work of the opposition uh, because you look at the, the previous elections and you're like, okay, we've lost certain votes from the ANC, the EFF has improved, the DA has lost certain votes. So it means activism is, is, is coming in. People now see the difference. People know what they're doing. But the challenge is, is the youth really participating in those conversations? Mm. Do they understand what is happening? rather than are we just moving with the flow because this one is making a lot of noise and he's saying yeah why didn't you bring this rather than what have they done where they are deployed you know we, we must always go back to look at all right we've given eff the municipality of this area what have they done are they able to even work in a coalition government before we say well i'm voting for them because they can speak you must never do that you look at the work from a very foundation level to say are they able to deliver on the smallest things before you even put them into office and say the current government is not working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it seems to me and also from your conversation that we don't have sort of structures that are very sustainable in actually, you know, putting accountability, you know, with our leaders. It's more like we just elect them into office and when they are there, you know. I also have a problem with our electoral system but maybe it can be a, a topic of another day because I think in part, like right now, it's very hard for a citizen to hold someone accountable because, I mean, even right now, the ANC can decide to, to release Ramaphosa and put yes. another person. We, Because we, we, our electoral system is such that we elect a party, then the party elects delegates. Yes. So in that That's way... That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. yeah, so in that way, you already killed the accountability part because we're all under one party. So as Rebecca, if you are under the ANC, you can't, you have to speak under the manifesto of the ANC. Yes. You yes. can't sort of yes. now digress from that. So I, I find that and problematic. And you must deliver to the manifesto. And you must deliver to the manifesto, right? I find that problematic mm -hmm. and I think that's why we don't have accountable measures because whom are you holding accountable? Is it the ANC? Is it the president himself? And then you see it even in the presidential decisions whereby, you know, maybe he has to go and consult with, you know, the party and if the party wants this. Yes, definitely. Okay, and then everything like that. Then 
you you see now it becomes confusing so that's why i'm saying that but maybe it's just my view but maybe we can have this conversation the other day about but the- look you can't you can't run away from from that part of of acknowledging that as a citizen you 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 take out your vote to a political party because even if we get to a point where we say okay maybe the president should be the only person that is held accountable. There is a certain cabal or a group that is going to be following the president's ideology and the vision of the president. So then it becomes a political party on its own. It's going to become a political party on its own, whether it's the person or, 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 or you know, the individual eventually makes a group. So that's how a party is formed. The EFF is formed because of one person, that is Julius Malema, his ideology and his vision drives the EFF. So who do you want to hold accountable exactly? Because now the followers are moving with his vision and ideology. So as a voter, you must know, you, you can't just say, well, I voted NC because I saw it was Ramaphosa. No, you must look at the manifesto of the ANC. He's deployed by the ANC. He's sure. not his own. He's speaking on behalf of a certain vision of someone who started the ANC a while back. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we can never run away from the groupings. That's what I'm trying to say. The cabal of Ham, him and Mashaba at the moment are moving with his vision. Yeah, the cabal yeah. of, um, who's this man that left the DA? Musi my man. Are going to sure. move with his vision. So you can't run away from that. So cabals, it doesn't matter who is accountable. So cabals are a reality, no? <laughs> yes! Yeah, it's not really so, the faction. Yeah, do, do you have those kind of systems of cabals and factions within the student governance as well? Like, of course. <laughs> of course. Wow. Then we're in danger, Mos. You're not in danger. That's what I'm saying. You can never run, run away, away from a grouping or a political organization because it was formed by one mind. Sure. one vision one obje- you know few objectives coming from one the, the point i'm trying to show is there's one head that said let's do this and yeah. people followed yeah so yeah. who do you want to hold accountable because no man is an island that's what they mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i get you <laughs> i get you i get you i get you um look uh Riri, you know this was a very great conversation it it even went beyond the time that it was supposed to be um because it was it was just interesting and hopefully maybe we have a part two a part three because it was it was quite interesting for me um uh, but then thank you and you know uh we wish you well in your leadership there in the src we need you you know especially in this time the students need you and your team and your president uh so <laughs> We are currently called e leadership. You know, we're not leadership. E. Oh, e leadership. Yeah, yeah, like you are the fourth industrial leadership yourselves. <laughs> the four are leaders. Yeah, no, but thank you for this and thank you for this conversation. And keep well there and just take off yourself because you might be dealing with a lot of things. You spoke about something emotional intelligence, you know, and um dealing with student issues you know i know you know emotions can because you get so much grounded into what they are going through and everything like that which can take a toll in your emotions and your your spirituality maybe uh, but just keep well keep safe keep quarantining keep uh, lockdowning um and yeah just uh, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for this, Riri. <laughs> no, thank you so much for having me and taking me out of my comfort zone, you know, to come oh. and account on certain things. Thank yeah. you, Riri. Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Um, thank you.